This is Marianne Grant, Life in Harmony Podcast. Today is the first day of your life. It's important. What are you going to do with it? Remember, I said you need to clean up any of your residue from yesterday mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, or sexually. I suggest you clean that up so you can have a good day today. And the good news is if you do that, we're going to have a great day. And it's much easier to try not to screw up so we don't have to keep apologizing. And this way we can start our day off fresh and not having to worry about anything. All right, sarcasm. Sarcasm is anger, emotions, bad attitude, enabling, people pleasing, not able to say no, drugs, alcohol, pills, relationships, sex, lust, love, anger, rage, porn, controlling everybody around you but yourself, distractions everywhere. Then you have nothing but have excuses, gambling, work, working out, food addiction, binge TV, phone, podcasts, news, caffeine, surgeries, being in a relationship with a man or a woman, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, sexually abusing one another, Or you may want to add to the list. Okay, today I want to talk about um, uh, where at the beginning, um, when you're at, as we age, we still look at our partners. Like in the beginning of when we meet and how we are when we're young. And as we age, um, everything starts to change. But yet our feelings, our thoughts, who we are, We always see ourselves at 20 or 30 years old. And remember, I said we're only 20 for five minutes. And then we just spend the rest of our life slowly but surely starting to age. And our actions and what we do to ourselves really reflect on how we're going to age, how we're going to be, how our life is going to be, and the importance of being aware of every action that we do will be a reflection on our future and how our future looks. So that's why I'm doing this podcast, for people to realize um, that you can't spend the rest of your life blaming and that you're in charge of your happiness. I remember with my kids growing up, when I came home with my first son, I said, this kid needs someone to play with. I never um, gave the expression to my children that I'm going to... Uh, make you happy. What I did was I would be outside, I would run, they would do their thing, I would do my thing. I let it up, I gave it, I gave them the choices of what they want to do, but I set the grounds, I set the atmosphere for them to be out there and play and to do fun things, but it was up to them to make their own fun. And this is the problem. If we don't be creative and create our life, we spend our life blaming our parents. We spend our life blaming everyone around us. And I don't know where we got this, like, life and other people are responsible for our happiness where that is the biggest lie and that is the biggest disappointment. Even down to relationships, it's up to us to create our relationship. It's up to us to make ourselves happy. It's up to us to set the standards. It's up to us to set the bar. And nobody can do that. And that's why everything we do to ourselves will be a reflection on what kind of life we're going to have. So I, as far as looking around in older people, they look at their partners, they look at themselves as still being young, and there's so much to learn from them. And this um, this uh, disgrace of not respecting the, the older people and looking at them like they don't matter and throwing them away like they're garbage is really, really scary. And they are the people, so many grandparents are now raising the kids we're in a we're in a, uh, a a time where we're losing so many boys and girls, young ages, to drug addiction, and the parent and the grandparents are ending up raising these kids, and it's real and it's scary. It's a level of abuse, self abuse, that we have never seen before in history. And again, if we can learn this at a young age to really start to take control, really start to look at your life. Um, and start creating the life you want to live. You can have whatever you want. There's plenty out there for everybody, but it's up to you. Remember, this is an action program. Nobody's going to do it but yourself. 
All right, balance, not too much of anything, our kids, our partner, our play, our work. When we stay balanced, it's life in harmony. When we abuse ourselves, everyone we love is infected by it. You cheat yourself and everyone around you. The level of love and respect that you give yourself, that is the level of love and respect that you will get in return. The goal for all of us is life in harmony. Our thinking can make or break us. That is why we have to check our thinking and attitude all day long. It has to be natural or else you end up getting backed up. This, my friend, is the greatest gift you can give yourself. Remember, we need the breakdowns to have the breakthroughs, and they are right around the corner. People say, I want to help be a part of taking care of the world. Here's the good news. If you truly take care of yourself all day and be a living example, that is taking care of the world. We all have gifts. We all have work to do. That is the true meaning of taking care of the world. Doing your part, no exceptions. The answers lie in each and every one of us. Your words mean nothing, you smooth talkers, manipulators, narcissists. Your actions say everything about you. I'm going to read a beautiful saying from Michael Singer. Spirituality begins when you decide you will never stop trying. Spirituality is a commitment to go beyond no matter what it takes. It's an infinite journey based upon going beyond yourself every minute of every day for the rest of your life. If you're truly going beyond, you're always at your limits. You're never back in the comfort zone. A spiritual being feels as though they're always against the edge and they're constantly being pushed through it. One should view their spiritual work as learning to live life without stress, problems, fear, or melodrama. This path of using life to evolve, spirituality is truly the highest path. Trust the process. The spiritual journey is one of constant transformation. To grow, you must give up the struggle to remain the same and learn to embrace change. Discipline is freedom. The undisciplined mind is like an elephant. If left to blunder around out of control, it will wreak havoc. Confront the difficult while it's still easy. Accomplish the great task by a series of small acts. You must go through the darkest night in order to get to the infinite light. What you call darkness is really the blockage of light. Eventually, you will realize that you cannot actually hurt yourself when you go beyond your psychological limits. You are willing to just stand at the edge and keep walking. You will go beyond. You used to pull back when it got uncomfortable. It's okay to get uncomfortable. Go beyond where you were a minute ago by handling what's happening now. Imagine the peace that you could experience if you weren't constantly creating and defending your false self. Trust the process. You are worth it. All right, I'm going to read a little part of my book. Page 58, second uh, pair, uh, saying, Don't let people intimidate you. Each of us have our shortcomings. We are no better or worse. We all have different mindsets. I love this. Um, as a little kid, I was so intimidated and threatened by intellect. Um, during school report card day, I used to cry. Um, I used to beg my brothers and sisters to not to give daddy the report card and wait so I could go out. I knew I was going to be grounded. Um, everybody in school was smarter than me. I always felt stupid. Um, I felt I never could learn. I was a very slow learner. I didn't learn like everybody else. My attention span was very short. I got bored easily. I couldn't stand being in the room. I felt school was prison. Everybody around me, I always made them much smarter. My Uncle Eddie, he used to travel the world, and he was just so smart, and I used to want to have a conversation with him. It's like in my head I knew what I wanted to say, but I didn't know how to express it. I didn't know how to say it. And I was embarrassed of my words. I didn't have the proper words. So I, I um, really struggled. And that's why I um, really went above and beyond to meet different people, to see the different intellectual people, and went back to school. When I went to college, and I got A's and B's, but I did the courses that I loved, that I wanted to learn about, and got the books that I wanted to read and learn about. I'm not a conformist, and um, I rebelled against the way they taught, and I was able to um, do the things and learn um, by doing these different courses and meeting people from all over the world. For me, um, I learned by truth, people, action, 
it's even um, even a lot of these counselors um, they have a hard time really relating to some of their patients because they've never experienced a lot of the stuff I feel it's very hard to teach something that you don't give yourself I find it's very hard like in addiction so many of these psychologists and therapists and counselors did not know how to treat alcoholics and addicts they, had, they were clueless that's why the 12-step program is one of the most powerful programs in the world it's all over in every in every country we have a 12-step program it's the most successful it's not religious it's spiritual it's powerful it's profound and um, if you don't keep giving it away and helping other people you don't stay clean and in, and again um, the uh, power of intellect and learning that's why I said we learn from everybody and um, going and doing these courses and seeing these people really stamp me and allow me to no longer be intimidated by anybody ever again. And I decided that when I do courses or when I'm teaching workshops, if somebody said something and I'm the teacher and if there's something I don't know, I ask them to give me the meaning of it. And you won't believe how many, how happy other people are because they don't know the meaning of it either. And they're happy that I had the balls to stand up and show that I don't know everything, which none of us know everything, and not be embarrassed that you don't know everything. And I ask a lot of questions. That's why I know what I know. I'm always asking questions. So um, when I'm with now other people and I can go anywhere, I, I feel I can hang in any situation, no matter what, how formal, informal, and whoever I sit with, and I'll still ask questions and not be embarrassed and not be ashamed and not apologize for who I am. And that's a great place to be. It took me a long time to get here. And I do believe that's one thing that does go with age, that the more we know, the more we teach ourselves, and the more that we forgive ourselves, that we're able to truly love and respect where we are in life and not be embarrassed and teach others to do the same. And that is the greatest gift and no longer apologizing for who you are. Okay, remember we can all heal together. I'm going to read the checkoff list. Work on one thing at a time. Eventually to be a way of life. Don't do too much of anything. Balance is most important. Remember, do one of these things for 30 days. Do the things that you can handle. And in one year, you will be a different person. I am clean and clear of all diseases and negative thoughts. What's controlling you? I accept today where I am powerless, I have control, where I have choices. I will reach out for help and use my tools today. I accept today and understand the only person I can change or regulate is myself. I will take time to hug and kiss my loved ones around me. I will show my partner today how much he or she is appreciated, needed, and loved. I will speak up for myself today, be true to ourselves and everyone we need and to be a priority to ourselves. The rest will follow. Everything we do is a practice and a discipline to master what we want. I will take charge of my life today and realize I'm in charge of all my decisions. I will know when it's time to bow out and let go and trust the process. I will set realistic goals for myself. I will get seven to eight hours of sleep tonight. I will set healthy boundaries around myself today. I will not allow anybody to speak to me with disrespect. I will make a conscious effort to eat healthy meals. I will take my food supplements today. I will drink six to eight glasses of water today. I will be good to myself today. Whoever can see through all fear will always be safe. I will talk with someone I trust and respect and be honest with them. Accountability is key. You cannot do it alone. We always lie to ourselves. I will trust and reach out to my higher power today. I will accept and say thank you for everything that happens to me today, good or bad. I will not do anything to cause harm to myself or others today. I am willing to change today. I will exercise today. I will pray for the well-being of myself and others today. I will write a list of all the things I want in a partner. If I become it, I will attract it. Discipline is freedom. Do two things a day that you do not want to do. My two things are always getting up early. I love sleeping and doing my podcast and working out and keeping my food clean and the rest will follow. All right, we can all heal together. It is a decision from our head to our heart. Remember, you can reach me at createyourspirit at gmail.com. Leave your number. I'll go over my workshops. Or if you want to order books and I'll sign them, uh, call me 
And if you want to learn about my services, Life in Harmony, online.com, leave your number and I will call you and I'll go over my services. Remember, I'm doing the podcast Monday through Friday. Share it with everybody you love and respect. And please start with podcast number one, number two, number three. It's overwhelming. Just a lot of information to digest. And remember, I want you to have a stunning day today. And thank you for listening.